More Code Geass content. Welcome to Kata. We're riding the hell out of this R3 hype train. And the best way to do that is to go back and analyze R1 and R2. Today, we're looking at Suzaku Kururugi. Suzaku has been criticized for being hypocritical, but today, we're going to analyze the meaning of his contradictory beliefs and actions. It's also a special day on this channel. This video is our first collaboration with a fellow AniTuber. Joining us today is Folatrox. Without further ado, let's talk about Code Geass. Folatrox, whenever you're ready, feel free to... Jibun Go. Now, the rivalry between Suzaku and Lelouch is very compelling, with both sides standing for two different ideologies. However, the problem is that almost everyone who watched the series cheered for Lelouch, no competition, leaving the bearer of the legendary Spinzaku ability open to hate. The reason being a lot of people are right in the sense that Suzaku contradicts his ideals a lot. He believes that war does not get won anywhere, and yet he becomes a soldier. He believes that he is in the Gias is immoral as it strips one of free will, and yet he interrogates Colin. He believes the ends do not justify the means, and yet he murders his father to stop a war. Actually, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. You see, I think that incident happened before his deontologist nature. Deontology is a moral theory, which is a belief that morality is defined in terms of duty or obligation, meaning that it is the act that makes the action immoral. So why do you call Suzaku a hypocrite? Of course, it roots back to Suzaku murdering his father. As you can see throughout the series, he is clearly quite troubled by this and displaying signs of guilt. Furthermore, I find it a tad bit strange that he jumped from being a non-consequentialist to being a consequentialist near the end of the show. Consequentialism is, simply put, the belief that the ends justify the means. This is very clearly the belief that Lelouch follows, murdering people and committing amoral acts to achieve this goal. Suzaku is a non-consequentialist, meaning that he believes the exact opposite, which is something he always, always always brings up. Now this sudden jump between beliefs combined with the fact that he murdered his father can be explained with this claim. Suzaku is forcing these deontologist beliefs on himself after the guilt of him murdering his father. Of course, naturally, he's bound to not follow his ideals as they are forced. Next, we're going to be looking at a scene from Kogi SR2 where Suzaku contradicts his classic non-consequentialist views. It's this scene where Suzaku tries to convince Shinaizo to form an agreement with him to kill Emperor Charles and be rewarded with the title of Knight of One. Though Suzaku is contradicting himself, you'll see that he's not actually being hypocritical. Uh, I think I understand where you're going with this. Suzaku's one goal has been to liberate Japan, and in R2 it's revealed that he plans to do so by becoming the Knight of One. This is the only motivation that remains consistent for him, because at some point, likely the Flay incident from R2 episode 18, which Suzaku made clear he felt was a pivotal moment in his personal philosophy, he changed from having these forced deontological beliefs to discarding them. Therefore, he's willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his goal. So now we have this scene where he's willing to do something that everyone acknowledges is underhanded because it's the fastest route to his personal goal. Exactly, with this constantly suppressing his true beliefs of his deontologist ideals, it is bound to snap at some point. The Fleegia incident was indeed the incident when it fully snapped and he finally embraces utilitarian ideals, as evident by the following conversation with Schneisel, where he outright states that he abandoned his deontologist ideals. You can see it even in the more casual conversation that occurs between Suzaku and his colleagues before Schneisel even enters the room. Suzaku forcefully asks about the new Lime lot and suggests that he would force Lord to provide the nightmare for him. Even here, you can see that he only cares about the end result of getting the nightmare, not how he obtains it. At the start of the show, Suzaku would be willing to die to uphold the honorable way of doing things, but in this scene, he abandons any honor he had left. He demeans Guilford's legacy to ensure that he was rightfully accredited for his actions. He demands that he be made the Knight of One as a reward for his achievements. Once Shizo seems to respond to his suggestion, Suzaku even offers to assassinate the current Emperor, Charles, so that Shizo can become the Emperor and grant him the Knight of One title. This is how he attempts to achieve his primary goal of liberating Japan. In the process, he is willing to undermine Fellow Knight's legacy, interrogate his colleagues, and even attempt regicide. No, I've been naive up till now. No, you? Stubbornly maintaining that the means are more important than the end result. I was idealistic and self-righteous. Perhaps, but... In any case, I insist on what is due me, your highness. Make me the Knight of One. Well, he said it all himself. These incidents explain his behavior for most of the series, thus rendering any claims he's hypocritical pretty invalid. I agree. That incident with the Flay was a big moment for Suzaku's character, and I think we can use it to predict his behavior in R3. You really thought we wouldn't talk about R3 in this video? Like many popular theories, I predict that Lelouch's resurrection will be brought upon by Suzaku. In Code Geass, Suzaku was always dutiful, and when he was Lelouch's knight, he would push Lelouch forward for the sake of the mission. I believe that if there was something that required Lelouch's abilities, Suzaku would track down a way to either find him if he hypothetically didn't know where he was, or resurrect him if he hypothetically was somehow actually dead. Which I'm pretty sure no one still believes, right? 
Yeah, we all know about the theory about Lelouch possessing Cold Geass, which is that Lelouch got his Geass from C2, then took Charles's code, and since his contract with the C2 was still active, he possessed both powers. This would mean that he didn't actually die at the end of R2. This is a pretty old and common theory in the Code Geass community, even if it isn't confirmed. That's exactly correct. If you're like me, you've seen all the Code Geass R3 content out there, which is to say the one trailer and a couple hundred YouTube videos, and you observe someone, presumed to be Suzaku himself, dressed as Zero and running around on rooftops and stuff. You also would have observed this crazy shot of Suzaku jumping off a crashing train. Intense. All we know about the plot of R3 right now is speculation, but one thing that we can be certain about is that Suzaku will play a huge role in the sequel. Many reasonably assume that Suzaku will be acting as Zero at least at the start of this series, but I predict that the villain of R3 will be none other than Zero himself. Not Lelouch or Suzaku, but someone who was influenced by the original Zero. Because I'm talking about an entirely new character, I can only guess what their motivation would be. I think it's likely that he'll be another person who possesses a code. After all, Lelouch is going to be the main character, and the main villain should at least be able to threaten his life. Without the introduction of a new weapon, a code or a geass would be the only power that could actually kill Lelouch now that he has the code geass. However, Schneisel and Suzaku's combined strength should be enough to deal with pretty much anyone, even a geass user. If the villain possessed a code, Suzaku would be forced to seek out Lelouch, or at least C2, leading him to Lelouch in the process, because he knows you need a code to beat one. The old Suzaku, probably all the way up to the Flea incident in R2, would have stubbornly tried to struggle against this new threat rather than seek out Lelouch's help because he couldn't agree with his methods. But this Suzaku would be willing to do what needs to be done, and in this case, that means resurrecting Lelouch, either through encouraging his return or literally orchestrating his actual resurrection should the Code Geass theory get disproved in the new sequel. Hmm, from the limited information we have on the new season, that just seems to be the closest thing to what it might be. That just got me pretty hyped. My sentiment's exactly, my friend. The Code Geass R3 hype train is only gaining more momentum, and there will be more Code Geass content coming soon to both this channel, Kato, and over at our friend Felatrox's channel too. Be sure to subscribe and check out the comment section below to be a part of the conversation.